This afternoon we're in the Thea showroom. Thea is a line of evening wear that is gorgeous, affordable, and we're talking with Don O'Neill, its designer. We're going to find out more about the line. So before we get into the line itself, just to give us a little bit of background on you yourself as a designer, what is your background? Well, my background, um, which you'll be picking up very quickly, is my Irish brogue. Okay. Born in Ireland, educated in Dublin. I worked in London for three and a half years. Worked in Paris for three years. Uh, on that trek, I worked in London for Gina Fratini, who was a very famous ball gown designer. Yes. Went to Paris and worked at McDonald's, which was awesome. It was the highlight of my career. <laughs> After a short stand at McDonald's, went to work at Christian Lacroix, which was incredible. That must have been an incredible experience. That was incredible. Worked in the couture studios, which was awesome. Was worked right beside him, got to see how the whole process worked, which was fabulous. Won a green card while I was there, as I said. Mr. Lacroix said I should come to New York, thanks to his uh, soothsayers, because he was very superstitious and sent me to see his psychic. Okay. Psychic said, Don needs to go to New York. Mr. Lacroix said, you go to New York. So I came to New York. 18 years later, I'm still here. Um, I came here, my first job was with Carmen Mark Valvo, very well-known evening wear designer here in the Garment Center. I uh, worked with Carmen for 10 years, and then I was hired by Badge de Mishka to launch their Platinum Collection. Okay, where I yes. worked for three years. And after three years there, the opportunity came to do something brand new, where I would be the sole creative force, and that was Thea. So here I am at Thea. Okay, so now you're up to speed on your arrival at Thea. What is Thea? Can you tell us what the concept of the line is? Well, it was really exciting to be able to start a brand new collection as a designer and to have no parameters set around me or no barriers. Um, at the time, I was researching names and I was drawn towards Greek mythology. Okay. Uh, the name Thea is the Greek for goddess, which is awesome. I researched Thea and Thea is the Greek goddess of light. And as I have a default mechanism for sparkle, I just thought the, the ideal name for the collection would be Thea, because Thea, making women radiant, making women feel like a goddess, would be the, would be the ultimate name for an evening wear collection. Now, the current collection you have is for fall 2011, coming Correct. to the store soon. Correct. What was your inspiration for this collection? Um, because I ultimately started with mythology and Greek mythology, I decided to reel it back and make it a bit more personal, so I brought it back to Irish mythology. And there's sort of a lot of overlap between the Irish goddesses and, and gods, and the Greek mythology is very interwoven. Um, so I went back to a very famous book called The Book of Kells, which is very well known in Ireland, and it's probably one of the most beautiful illuminated manuscripts known to mankind. And the book is lavishly colored, it's beautifully illustrated, it's full of spirals and intricate borders, and the collection sort of sprang from there. Okay, and how did that influence what fabrics you were going to use for the collection? The fabrications in themselves, I, being a, a, a traditional evening wear designer, I tend to stay with soft fluid fabrics, with chiffons, with laces, with organzas. So it was more about how I treated the fabrics and how I embellished them. So that the prints sort of had a feeling of the parchment from the book where they were sort of aged and antiqued. The actual embroideries that went onto the garments were sort of picking up the metals and the gold tones from the actual pieces. So it was sort of, it was sort of a, an amalgamation of those influences that I've sort of brought into the collection. Our big fans is Carrie Underwood. And Carrie has been wearing us right, I think we were here not even two months and Carrie was already wearing us on the red carpet. And one particular dress, which is, a, is this one here, um, because Carrie's stylist was used to us um, making magnificent dresses for Carrie, she had a need for this beautiful gown for the Academy of Country and Music Awards. The fantasy was that Carrie would wear a beautiful, soft, ethereal ball gown in a beautiful pastel print. She said, Don, can you make the dress? You have three weeks. I'm like, oh my God, I don't even have a print. But I knew I had bought a painting, because I'm a big fan of big painted artworks. I had this beautiful poppy painting. I sent it to Italy that night, and within two weeks it was back, um, organza. We had four days to make the dress, um, literally down to the wire, got the dress down to Las Vegas the night she needed to wear it, and then Carrie swam on stage as if nothing had ever happened, this beautiful ethereal gown, and it was a big hit on stage. It was wonderful. I remember um, the press on that, and she looked spectacular in it. We got some great press on it. The Wall Street Journal picked it up. It went around the world. The whole story of how we made a dress happen in three weeks from a 
literally a painting becoming a gown, which was really exciting. And moving on to um, another wonderful star, Taylor Swift. Um, when the Speak Now album launched back, I believe it was in November, um, she wore this on the morning of the launch on the Today Show and she performed in this very dress. Um, she's a big fan of sparkles, she's a big fan of sequins, and she fell in love with this dress. And ever since she's worn this, we've had a constant supply of dresses going to her. And then, um, a little bit more sophisticated, this one was worn by Amy Poehler from Saturday Night Live. Um, she wore it to the White House Correspondents' Dinner on, I believe, last Saturday night. Okay. And we had a very nice meeting this morning with um, Med Meredith Mellingberg from Vogue. And Meredith was dressing Amy for the um, Met Gala last weekend. And all Amy was talking about was her wonderful fair dress that she wore the week before at the White House. Well, so congratulations on cool. that. Now, how do you choose the prints that you work with? Um, I'm very, I'm, I'm an artist at heart, and I like to draw and I like to paint, so I'm, I'm drawn to paintings that are, or sorry, I'm drawn to prints that look like paintings. Okay. So here in particular you can see, it's obviously that it was a painting, you can see the brush strokes in the artwork, and here again in this one you can see again, it looks like somebody took a paintbrush and literally painted directly onto the fabric. It does, it looks completely hand painted. And it's a signature that runs through the entire Thea collection, season after season. All the painting, all the prints look like somebody painted the fabric. Now, Thea is also doing a bridal line, correct? Yes, we're in our second season with the bridal collection. Would you show us some of that? I would love to. So here we have probably our most well-known dress. We call it the Kate. Um, this dress was designed last November when Kate first got engaged. Okay. Um, I was asked at the time um, to predict the gown that I thought was fit for a princess. And my prediction was a princess would wear lace, a princess would wear long illusion sleeves. My princess, um, based on how Kate dressed, I assume would wear a slim fitted skirt. You know, I predicted this because I thought um, Diana having worn such a big ball gown that Kate would want to distance herself from that look and wear something okay. entirely different. So I predicted a slim fitted skirt. But we were really happy on the day of to see her in lace and to see her with a long illusion sleeve, to see her all the buttons. It was, it was very exciting. And then it was even more exciting to see her change into her second dress, which was also on our collection, which is almost identical to the dress she changed into. This one in the silk organza. And then we spoke earlier about couture details. Um, this is made by an amazing couture studio, which is in, based in Bombay, which is where the finest embroideries are made. And this beautiful crystal waistband is almost identical to the one that was on Kate's dress. Oh, beautiful. And then for a little bit of um, fashion flair and a little bit more editorial, feathers were a big deal for fall. So we brought the feathers through into our bridal collection, and this dress is a little bit more whimsical, but has been surprisingly popular. The nice sleek line as well. In the, in the heavy bias crepe, yep. And then a little bit more editorial, because this is a fall collection, sort of for a fall bride, we're predicting this cashmere lace, which is over a nude lining. And then it's totally encrusted with these amazing freshwater pearls and sequins and Swarovski crystals. But this on the body looks amazing. It's like wearing your favorite sweater. And this was a favorite of all the bridal editors when they came up to see the collection. It's very, very original. I don't think I've seen anything like it. They hadn't either. Yeah. <laughs> so it's already been pulled quite a bit for editorial. Excellent. Um, part, of, part of what makes Thea special also is we work on the change into category. So we believe a lot of brides, after they wear their big formal gown, would choose to change into something a little bit more comfortable, but equally dazzling for the actual after party. And this is one of our favorite dresses. It's the Crystal Goddess, the short, sexy, entirely crystal encrusted little cocktail dress. And what's really cute here at the neckline, it's on a nude illusion tool. So these crystals look like they're floating on your chest and you just have this beautiful dress shimmering around your body. One or two brides have made very dazzling entrances second time around on their wedding day in this dress. The, the detail of the flowers is absolutely gorgeous. Probably one of our most popular dresses. When I initially started the bridal collection, it was sort of for um, a destination bride or a rehearsal dinner, not so much a formal wedding gown. Um, this dress in particular was our most successful destination dress. We call it the petal gown. Um, the dress is incredible. It has these different sizes of laser cut petals that are stitched on with seed pearls that um, float on over the dress. The hem of the skirt has this beautiful big full circle. 
The dress is incredibly light. It's stitched on tulle and then has a beautiful jersey lining so the dress stretches. Every woman who puts this dress on can't, can't believe, number one, how comfortable she is in it. And it's so light. And how light the dress is and how good they look in it. It's a very flattering dress on everybody and who puts it on. The texture element is incredible. And it just has a very romantic, soft, ethereal feel to it also. The whole collection actually started with this dress. Let me just quickly go to this. We call this the goddess gown. This was the very first dress that I designed for Thea. Um, ultimately because I was thinking goddess and I guess I was channeling goddesses and I had made this white gown with this beautiful, again, a couture uh, waistband with this wonderful detail with all of these Swarovski crystals. And my favorite, I'd like to put a lot of fabric in my dresses. This one in particular, the skirt has nine yards of fabric in it, which is amazing. And then when you put it on, when you walk in the dress, it's super light and it just wafts around the body. Um, and again, this being one of the very first dresses I made, it's sort of this was the beginning of the whole bridal evolution, which now has become a fully fledged collection. Well, it looks like you've got your hands full between the regular Thea collection and the bridal collection. Um, how do you keep your creativity going with all of that? It's challenging. Yeah? It's very challenging. Um, every time I make a really pretty dress, there's no time to really sit back on my laurels and think, wow, isn't this great? Look what I did. Because everyone's like, okay, that's great. Now what are you going to do? And whenever, especially this, the crystal dress that we spoke about earlier, this is such a pretty dress. And it's like, well, how are you going to top that? It's, it's, you're always challenged to do something better. And competing against yourself. And competing against myself. Well, so far you're doing a great job of it. Thank you. <laughs> um, we're looking forward to seeing just around the corner, spring. Yes. Uh, yes, we're working right now in spring one. Um, which is sort of in the air and I'm sort of trying to channel spring having just come out of bridal and, and spring will be on top of me true spring in September before I know it so there's a, a lot of work to be done over the summer it well, never stops so we're looking forward to coming back and seeing what you've I done for you spring will. at that I point I hope you will okay. thank you very much I appreciate it it was a pleasure thank you and good luck with all of your endeavors thank you